Hi, and welcome to the first session of the Quantum GIS walkthrough series. In this session, I'll be introducing you to vector symbology and labeling. The project file I'll be working with includes the roads, rivers, cadastrals, and land cover shapefiles. Please note that throughout the series, I'll be using the new symbology settings. To check if you are in new symbology, double click your layer. In the layer properties dialog, it should look something like this. If you are in old symbology mode, it will look different like this. To access new symbology mode, click new symbology in the top right corner. In session two in the screencast series, I explained how to change new symbology to your default settings. New symbology allows you much more functionality than the old symbology. Let's start working with a layer. I'm gonna begin with my rivers layer. It's easy to change the color by clicking the color box. And I can also adjust the width. Click apply to see the difference. Let's move on to some more options. Click the change button under the current preview. Yeah, I can edit my symbol layers, change the pen style, or change the join and cap style of my different layers. I'm going to change this to round and round for my join and cap styles. Next, I'll add on a new symbol layer by clicking this plus icon. My current symbol layers are shown in this list. The order of the list is important as layers high in the list will be drawn above layers low in the list. Let's edit the symbol layer I just added. Make sure that it is this layer selected and change the color the pen width, maybe the pen style, and the join and cap styles. Notice that the symbol is updating in the symbol preview. If you like your new symbology, you can save this to your styles. Click the Save as Style button. You can access and manage your styles through the Style Manager. Next time we access vector symbology for a line, we'll see these styles available. If you wish to export it as a QML file, you can save the style. You can also load styles from previous QML files. I will load a previous simple rubber symbology that I made. If I wish to use this as default for next time, I can save as default. Then whenever I open this particular rivers file, it will always appear as displayed.
Now I'm going to go onto the roads layer. Watch and follow as I edit the settings. Okay, that doesn't look too neat. I can fix this by using symbol levels. Okay, better. Next, I'm going to do some polygon symbology. All new symbology has symbol levels. I'll show you something fancy that you can do with polygons. Again, I'll be using two layers. I'll use the bottom layer as a shadow. So I'll choose a dark color and remove the border color. To create a shadow effect, I'll use a slight offset. I can check in the symbol preview. This gives an almost 3D effect to my buildings. In the last symbology exercise, I'll be using the land cover to show you how to do categorize symbology. I'm going to be using this description field to do the categorize symbology. I'll click on the drop down menu to choose categorized. and click description. There are some default color ramps, but I would like to add a new color ramp. I select new color ramp, and for mine I'll use the color brewer. There are a number of options here, but change it to 11 colors and press OK. I can name this to access it next time. Now I can click classify. And apply. Okay, I'm going to use my land cover as a backdrop, so I wish to make it slightly transparent. I can edit it by clicking change symbol. And I'm also going to remove the outline. Now, I need to click Classify to update. Okay. 
Now, for the last section in this session, I'm going to show you how to use the labels. For the labels, I'll be labeling the roads layer. You can use layer properties for la labels, but there's also a much neater labeling tool. The labeling tool I'll show you uses collision detection, so the labels do not overlap and look messy. Select your layer and access the labeling tool either through the layer menu under labeling, or you can access it from the toolbar. You might need to check that your labeling toolbar is enabled. Click label this layer and choose the field that you wish to use. Then you can set any other parameters. For mine, I'm also going to choose on the line and curved instead of parallel. and remove the buffer. I can see that the, la the labels are repeating. There's also an option to say merge connected lines to avoid duplicate layers. Let's put all our symbology together. The overall effect of good symbology and labeling can be quite powerful. This concludes the introduction to symbology and labeling. In the next screencast, I'll be looking at effective use of transparency for rasters.